All right, so tonight I'm working on a couple of wine caddies. And these molds, I got these molds from Bear Woods. They're on their website. Um, they have two different shapes, and I'm going to pour both of them tonight. They have this geode shape and then this more, um, I guess, regular edge <laughs> shape. I've got these wine glasses sitting out because I wanted to show you a little bit about what I'm working on for this whole project. I'll start with these. So I poured these um, earlier this week. So I just wanted to show you some cool things you can do. If you're making wine caddies, a lot of times we just put plain wine glasses with them, but you can actually do some cool stuff on the bottoms. These are the ones that I'm actually going to use as inspiration for one of these caddies. And I did these in two different color combinations. So I'm gonna be using these glasses with this caddy. Um, these are all the Bray Reese inks that Bear Woods carries. So I'm using Berry, Midnight, Teal, and I thought I'd try the silver. I haven't used the silver yet, and I'm kind of curious as to like how metallic that is. So I've got resin mixed up. I have four ounces mixed up for each of these. Let's get some of this hair out of these. It's the joy of having dogs. Their hair is everywhere. So I'm gonna start out by mixing up the mica. So when you mix mica, you always got to start out a little slow because you don't want to end up poofing it all over the place until you get it into the resin. You know what, I'm going to pour my clear in here right now and give this a chance to settle and let the bubbles work out while I'm mixing up the colors. Okay, so I'll let that settle um, while I mix these up, and then hopefully some of those bubbles will be up at the top. I'm using the Moss Art Pro resin for this project. All right, so there's a, a few really big bubbles stuck down to the bottom of the mold. So I'm gonna take my toothpick, and I'm gonna use the fat side, and I'm actually not gonna touch the mold. I'm just gonna swirl the stick right above the bubble, and it creates a little bit of a vortex and it lifts the bubble right off the mold. They just do this little swirly scooping motion and it just sucks it right to the top. So I'm gonna add some glass into the middle of this, just for some interest. I know I don't have this on the wine glasses. I'm just kind of letting it be a little bit random. Just pushing it down under the resin. Even though it'll sink because it is glass and it's heavy, eventually it'll sink. This does help with releasing some of those bubbles too. I'm gonna start with the pink and the red. Now instead of doing a swirl and then dragging, I'm gonna do a little bit more like flower petals, but I will still probably end up dragging. All right, then I'm gonna do the other side. And you notice I always use the heat gun in the cup before I pour. You do have to be careful not to overdo it because you don't want to melt your cup, but I find it really does help to get the bubbles off the surface of your cup. It definitely reduces the number of bubbles that you're gonna have in your pour. So resin always moves towards the center of the mold. Um, so I'm hoping as it's sitting here and you guys are watching me work on the other one, I'm hoping over time we see it kind of move in and do that magical thing that resin does. I'm just gonna drag some of these 
a little bit more towards the center. And where I started and stopped pouring those little blobs. So I'm just kind of moving the blob. I don't want it to sink all the way down. Okay, so hopefully these will bloom and open up a little bit. I'm just gonna hit it with a heat gun real gently. I'm not trying to move it around. I'm just trying to get the bubbles again. And then I'm just gonna hit it with the torch just to get those more stubborn bubbles out. So I will come back to this and probably torch it again um, in the next few minutes. So what I'm gonna do, I have these clear stones. This is quartz, but they're clear. And I've used these in pours before and they pretty much disappear because they're clear. <laughs> um, there might be a few that are a little milky and you could use any, any clear, you could use beads or glass for this. So I'm just gonna drop the alcohol ink on top of these stones and then I'm gonna pour the clear resin over it all. You know, the ink, on the stones, it creates a really cool, kind of a, like a marbling effect underneath the stones. And then when you pour the resin over it, it pushes it out and then you get some really cool color blending. So I tried to pick some colors that I thought would blend nicely together. I'm not gonna <laughs> make ugly colors when they blend. So this is um, Midnight. This is like a purplish blue. This pink that I just used is called Berry. And then I've got this one, it's called teal. So kind of going with cool colors for this. All right, then I've got the silver. They don't like to blend in to the resin as much as the colored inks do. All right, so I've had this over on my mixer. It should be pretty well mixed up. Oh, that looks so cool already. I love this. Might have a few of the um, stones sticking out a tiny bit. <laughs> so when I use alcohol inks, especially when I use this much, I don't use a torch. I only use the heat gun because I have set a few things on fire that had alcohol ink in them. So you gotta be really careful when you're using alcohol ink. So I know in the video, this looks really dark and you can't really see the detail. I'll let that settle for just a minute before I blow it. All right, I'm gonna put my um, heat gun on low and try and blow from a distance and hopefully I get some of these bubbles to pop. So I think I'm gonna have to come back a couple times in the next like 20 minutes or so and re-blow this. Well, let me pull you down for close up on everything. So it's a little hard to see, but there are some transparent areas like right there, that tealish green. So I think this is gonna be really cool. I think there's gonna be some areas that you can see through it. And then having those stones in there might create some really neat effects on the other side. So I cannot wait to demold this. Um, the colors definitely blended pretty cool. I don't know what it looks like on the other side though. And then this guy, a lot of neat stuff happening with those petals. So well, yeah, these are both pretty fun. So I will post pictures on the Facebook page tomorrow so you guys can see what these um, end up looking like once I take them out of the molds. And if you have any questions, like I said, please leave them in the comments and I will try to answer. So I hope you all have a great rest of your evening or day, wherever you might be.